doing. Okay, I thought I would make another video. Um, once I got a request in the comment section, uh, someone was interested in how I built it. So I thought I'd make a quick video. Uh, I do apologize, it took me so long. Uh, but it's cold down here in the basement, so I am going to try to make this fairly quick. But I put the two meters together, and you can see that the highest voltage is on the left. Just to show you, I'll click it over. And now the highest voltage is on the right, which is a lot of voltage, so I probably don't want to leave it there too long. So I'll click it back. Now, um, I'll start at the drawing that I did. Uh, help simplify it. Okay, now uh, this represents the Bedini. And this is the primary side, charge side. And you can see the wires go straight across to primary battery, charge battery. Now when you turn the barrel a quarter of a turn, it looks like this. So you can see the charge or the primary battery now is over on the left and the charge battery is on the right. So it effectively swap the batteries. Yeah, it's a pretty easy concept and it works really well. I'll show you the prototype that I made first, which it worked really well also, but it wasn't real precise and I didn't want to keep contact. So I had to make something a little more precise, but you can see right through it, so it helps uh, helps you see what I did. So now, uh, this side being the primary, this side being the charge, and it'll always be that way. It's always be primary. So now you see the primary battery goes over to the left side over here. And uh, when I turn it a quarter of a turn, now the primary battery is on the right side. And it effectively swaps the batteries. Now, as far as this mechanism here, as you can tell, uh, if you can see in there, uh, I got a washer that's around the shaft that turns with the uh, gear. And I got four holes drilled in it. And then this wire is just coat hanger. I just bent it so that uh, when I turn this here, it pulled the wires in. And the reason the barrel ain't turning is because on this side, and let me turn the light on. I got a wire bent, stuck in the plastic. Now when I turn it, that stops the, the barrel from turning until the wire clears and then it turns. And that wire will stop the next one so it actually turns a quarter of a turn. Like I said, this one here wasn't real precise, but it, it showed me that it would work. Where am I at? Okay, here we are. So, uh, and actually I I stuck the gear on it, and my first idea was to use a clock motor, put a gear on it, and uh, mount it down, put a screw in it, and believe it or not, it worked really well. It took about 14 hours for it to click over. Unfortunately, I never got to see it click over. I was never here at the exact time, but uh, it did click over. Um, and, it, and it worked, but... Uh, but I had to build one a little bit more precise so that I uh, didn't have any problems. Uh, but the one thing that I wish I would have done, and I'll probably still do, I should have uh, drilled these holes here. This is the primary side. I should have drilled these holes a little bigger. That way the wire would have been a little bit shorter. What I ended up doing was putting some super glue over the holes to effectively shorten the wires. Uh, that way when it clicked over, uh, it would disconnect the primary first and then the charge battery. And then when it uh, reconnected, it would connect the charge battery and then the primary, which would uh, ensure that uh, the lights didn't flash so that uh, there wasn't being any excess load on the transistors and burning them out as I went through that. But uh, I wanted to show you that works. You see the highest voltage is on the left, and I'll click it over, and uh, so you can see it doesn't uh, light any lights. Okay, there, I clicked it over, and the highest voltage is on the right, and I'll click it back again, and no flashing. And uh, like I said, you know, all I really need to do is uh, drill these holes a little bit bigger, and. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't tear this apart. It, it's a lot of wires and stuff. I was hoping that uh, 
just putting it on paper and showing you my prototype would uh, be enough information. But if not, uh, feel free to give me a comment. If you want me to tear it apart, I'll do that. And uh, and this is basically the, the gears made the same way. Uh, the only difference was I, I used a spring that was kind of like a recoil spring in a, in a lawnmower. Uh, we pull the rope and the spring recoils it back. I tried to use a spring like that. And I really don't like it. I think I'm going to go back to the, the prototype way I did it. But uh, other than that, I'm very happy with it. And uh, But my idea was, originally, <clears throat> I got a 400 watt converter. Uh, and when the battery gets low, it'll sound an alarm. I was going to tap into that alarm, and instead of sounding an alarm, I was going to have it turned over a geared motor so that it would turn this over. Um, so when the alarm sounds, it turns this over, swaps the batteries, uh, then the alarm will stop sounding, it'll stop turning, and uh, it should be a self-running system then. I really haven't tried it, but... Uh, and the reason I haven't tried it uh, is because I had something happen that was extremely exciting and interesting. Uh, what happened was I had the primary battery running the converter, and then I had my bench light plugged into the converter. Um, I wanted to see how long the primary battery would stay up. So what I did was I charged up the primary battery and the charge battery, and then I started the Bedini, had the everything running, light on, and my grandson was on the bench uh, building his own Bedini, and I was working on the tractor outside. I came in a couple hours later, and the primary battery didn't go down. It still was about the same. So, you know, needless to say, I came in you know pretty often 20 minutes half hour to check on it to see you know if it was going to go down and uh, the next time I came in it actually went up and then it went down and the next time I came in it was up a little bit and uh, needless to say I thought my uh, meters were screwing up so Harbor Freight meters and all but uh, so I grabbed a piece of paper and I started writing down the voltages and what time it was and a bunch of other information I really didn't need all I needed was the voltages because the one thing that I learned from it was that when the primary battery went up, the charger battery went down a little bit. Every time when the primary battery would go down, the charge battery would go up. It was like a teeter-totter and it floated back and forth like that. And uh, it maintained that way for a few weeks, probably, probably closer to a month, and then I... I uh, decided that I would just go ahead and build a big one so needless to say I really never got to hook up the battery swapper to its full potential yet because uh, it just kept running um, so I decided to build a bigger one and uh, I don't know if you can see it or not I'll turn the light on but, yeah but anyway that's my new one that I'm getting ready to build or in the process of building I should say uh, and my idea now is to build one and uh, have it hooked up and if it'll sustain itself, uh, I'll see if I can hook like a windmill generator to the end of it. And then I think I'll have something a little better than a solar panel or a windmill, which is what I was going for uh, in the start. So there's so many directions to go with this. But I think that's the direction I'm going to head for now. And uh, so that's where I'm at right now. If there's any uh, questions or comments, uh, please leave them. I like hearing them. So, anyway, you guys uh, have a great day. And uh, hopefully I'll be making another video soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.